Hello and welcome to this course with me, Rory from Harpy Production, and today I'm sitting with Sonic Academy giving you a complete rundown of the brand new 10.4 Logic Pro update. So in this particular video I'm going to be talking about the Chroma Verb and the updated Space Designer in there as well. But first of all we're going to be talking about the amazing new Chroma Verb plugin. So what this is, is basically a algorithmic reverb plugin, which basically emulates lots of different spaces, and it's a lot more ambient than the predecessor, the Space Designer. So what I want to do is just basically run over some of the features that it has, and then we're going to go into more of a listening mode and basically seeing how it sounds on various different elements. So when you open up the plugin, you're going to be welcomed with this default window, so you've already got a few little parameters that are already preset when you open it up. Then when you click on this room button, you're going to be given basically 14 different reverb algorithms. So these are basically different premeditated reverb responses that have then been incorporated within the plugin. So some of these terms you should be quite familiar with. So we have room, chamber, concert hall, synth hall, and various other ones like that. But then we also have some additional different ones that we might not have heard of before. So reflective hall or strange room, airy and bloomy. So we're going to be going over to see how those sound in a minute. Then we've got this main window here, which is this EQ. So we can basically shape the tonality of the reverb as it's sort of going in, as the signal is coming in. And then on this details, we also have another EQ to basically shape the tonality of the output of the plugin. So having those two variations of EQ there is really, really powerful. Then back on this main window at the bottom, we have attack, size and density. So basically how quickly the reverb is going to be coming in, the size of it. So basically how big and how long the diffusion sort of sounds, the density. So basically that's sort of either low cutting or how sort of dense we want that reverb to sound. Then next to that we have decay, so basically how long the reverb lasts for. And then we have distance, which you can imagine is basically emulating how far or how close the walls are within a room. Then to the right of that we have our dry and wet, so quite self-explanatory. We can either bump up how much of the original source material we want and how much of the reverb plugin we actually want to hear. Then also below this attack button here, we can either select the pre-delay so this is basically when the attacks can be coming in. So typically a lot of plugins will have that bay calculated in milliseconds and then you can, there are actually websites out there that you can work out the milliseconds to the tempo of your track. But if you want it to lock into the tempo of your track already, just click this little note and then you can select all the different time signatures down there as well. So that is really handy. Then below this decay, so basically the length of how long the reverb is going to be lasting for, we also have a freeze function which is really, really powerful. So you can capture a snippet of your original source material and you can just have the reverb sort of self-oscillating if you like. So that can help create some real sort of dense soundscapes and create some real good ambient effects there. Then we click on this details. So at the bottom here we can select our quality to the left. So we can have low, high or ultra. So depending on how powerful your computer is, you can sort of just rein it back of how much CPU this plugin is actually going to be using. Then to the right of that, we have our modulation speeds, depth, mod source. So whether we'll be using a sine wave or a step, or we can have sort of this random kind of mod modulation there as well. We can also have a smoothing option. So basically how smooth the diffusion of the reverb is going to be. Then we also have a indicator of how much of the early reflections or the late reflections that we want of the reverb. Then to the right of that we also have a width, so basically how wide across the stereo field we want the reverb to sound. And then another unique feature to a reverb plugin which is not very common is actually a mono maker. So basically how much of the original source material, you, or basically the reverb sorry, you want in mono. So then obviously we've got it from 20 hertz, you can bump that all the way up to 5000 hertz. So again, I'll be showing you that in an example coming shortly. So we've got a drum track here, let's just get into how it's going to sound and how it's going to listen. And you'll also notice as part of the GUI for this, you've got a real cool spectrum analyzer, which is switched on and off with this button here. So we've just got the default setting on at the moment, so let's play through this drum track. I'm going to have it bypass first and I'm going to introduce it sort of midway through. So that's a real unique way of how to visually look at a reverb response. 
I've not ever seen that in a sort of reverb plugin before, so that looks really, really nice. And as I say, you can switch that off if you like with this little toggle button down here. But let's leave it on for now. Then we can select through some of the different algorithm presets. So let's have a listen to some of these at the top here, and I'll just select through some random ones as well. So you probably noticed there that the strange room sounded a lot different to what the other ones were sounding like. And what this is using primarily is the modulation effects built into this plugin. So what modulation will effectively do to the reverb signal is actually sort of give it a bit of a pulsating effect and basically sort of modulate it, if you like. So that can create some quite strange and sort of semi-ambient sounds there as well. So let's go down to a preset. So if we go down to halls, we've got 80s drums, so it's quite an 80s sounding drum loop here. So let's see how that sounds. So then we've got a deep 80s drum set preset there as well, which is going to have quite a short decay, as you can see down here. So we've only got 25 seconds, or sorry, 0.25 seconds. So it's giving you sort of that gated reverb effect, which is obviously quite like how 80s drums would sound. So what I want to move on to now is actually hearing how it's going to sound on some different elements. So I've got a guitar loop here, so we'll play that without the reverb plugin on. Okay, so then when we introduce the chroma verb, we can then start getting some quite ambient sounds here. So I'm going to leave the decay up at 22 seconds. So that is a huge amount of decay for a reverb plugin. And you can create some really nice big ambient sounds out here. So let's have a look. So you can imagine how sort of when you're playing guitar or whatever, you've got maybe like a, a volume pedal or something like that, you can start creating some real cool ambient sounds. I know I keep reiterating that word, but it's kind of the best way to describe it. So we've also got a freeze button here at the bottom. So let's have a quick listen to that. So I'm going to bump this down just slightly. And then what we're going to do is capture the first initial part of our guitar loop. And then we're going to have that sort of running through. In fact, what I'll do, I'll turn that down. I'll capture the first bit and then I'll feed it in. And then what I will do is actually then bring down the dry so you can hear that sort of self-oscillating, revolving reverb effect. So you can then start imagining how you can incorporate that in, into your track. So if you've got sort of like an intro or you've got like a breakdown or something similar like that, you can create some real nice droney ambient sounds to sort of sit underneath all your music to help create that sort of ambience and vibes and, you know, and whatnot. So that's a real cool feature part of that plugin as well. So what I want to do instead of using a guitar loop, let's go on a road here. So I've actually got this plugged into my MIDI keyboard. Okay, so then let's incorporate an instance of that. So let's go down to Reverb and then go on the Chroma Verb and then start having a little play around. Okay, and let's get something a bit bigger. So we've got ambiences. Let's go on large ambience. So let's bump up the wet. Okay. 
Okay, and let's try and bump up that decay and get some more sort of ambient sounds out of that. Okay, and let's have a listen to some maybe more effective stuff. So, weird space. So you can hear that sort of modulating happening to the reverb in the background. So let me just quickly explain a little bit about why we sort of have two EQs. So basically, if you have a lot of reverb sort of planted on something, you, you're going to have to sort of EQ it to try and give it some space. Because what will happen is if you have so much reverb planted on something, you can start making it sound a bit muddy, not very clear. So having those dual EQs, so one going from the main source to then going to the output, can just help clear up some of the sort of piling on of the reverb, if you like. So if we go to this mid here, and then you can start ducking out some of the middle bits so that, say if you've got something like a vocal that's quite sort of mid-rangey, you can then just simply go in there, instead of having to upload or open up another instance of a separate EQ, you can do it all within one plugin. So that is super handy. So then if we sort of duck that out a little bit, and then let's go back onto our main, up the dry and up the wet. So it just helps bring the reverb out a little bit and it makes it sound a bit brighter and basically so you can just hear it a bit clearer. So that's a sort of a good mixing technique to how to basically hear your reverbs within a quite a busy mix. So I've also got a piano down here as well. So let's have a quick listen to what's this reverb will sound on here. And let's try out another preset. So let's go on synth reverbs and let's go big, long and distant. And just for the sake of this, let's bring up the wet. So then let's just record a quick piano bit and then what we can do is then start playing around with the freeze in there because it's not going to work sort of in real time because it needs something to read from. So let's record something in there. Okay, and then when I begin to play it and hit freeze, So you can start creating some real nice sounds out of that. So then you can start automating the wet. So like I pull down the wet there. And then you can MIDI map it to any knobs that you've got. So you can start incorporating it. So you can get a lot more interactive with your automation and basically using the lanes to then create some real cool soundscape effects there as well. So another part of the update that I wanted to talk about quickly was the Space Designer redesign. Okay, so they have actually updated this and now it looks great and it's so much easier to use. So it's obviously followed sort of a design aspect from the Chroma Verb. So you can see at the bottom here it looks very similar and obviously the above bits is not going to look so similar because they're different plugins. So that we have a sampled basically response and we have a synthesized impulse response as well. So a sampled impulse response will basically be a recording of a room. So actually going to these spaces, recording the reverb impulse responses, and then basically loading those into this plugin. Whereas synthesized, it will be using more mathematical algorithms to then emulate these spaces. So if you want something that sounds a bit more real, and a bit more like an actual hall or a cave or something like that, then you want to go on sampled IR. But if you're quite happy with using something that sounds a bit more synthetic and you want it to sound a bit more electric sounding or a bit more 
kind of like electronic music production sounding. They definitely use synthesized impulse response. So let's have a little play around with this. Let's switch off the chromoverb and just have a listen to some of the presets on here. Okay, so that's, that's definitely sounding much more sort of a room kind of sound. But then if we click over to synthesized impulse response. So that's not quite sounding as natural as the room. It's sounding a little bit more swallowing, if you like. And it's definitely not using sort of the sampled impulse responses. So it's going to be sounding slightly different in that respect. So again, down the bottom here, we've got a couple of similar features as well. So we've got a quality, so we can sort of set that to how we want. This has got an additional one here called Lo-Fi. So this is basically just going to filter out some of the highs and the lows to make it sound a little bit more Lo-Fi. Okay, so the reverb response is then going to sound a little bit more muffled and a little bit sort of less bright, if you like. So there's plenty of features that you sort of play around with here. So we've also got the volume envelope as well, so we can start changing around with the decay. So this is a lot more sort of of a visual reverb sort of parameter adjustment rather than the chroma verb, which is a lot more sort of you're dialing and using these. Whereas here you can kind of do it a bit bit more visually if you like so you can start pulling those and then you've also got a filter as well so this is basically just filtering out so think of it kind of like the eq but not as in depth so you can start cutting out some of the lows or cutting out some of the highs but then what this also does have is an output eq like the chroma verb as well so you can start again sculpting the tonality of the sound so you're not getting the reverb piling on top of each other down here is similar to the attack sort of and decay sizing that we had on the chroma verb you can sort of dictate the length of the reverb, how quickly you want the pre-delay to come in, again, which can be switched over to fit in time with your global tempo of your DAW, and again, the size of the reverb. So that's adhering to the decay and sort of the general sound of, and of the diffusion of the reverb. So basically how big you want your sound. You can also reverse the reverb as well using this button here. So when you click on that, Okay, so that can basically come up with some real cool creative reverb effects there as well. Then what we can do is actually load your own impulse responses. So if you've gone to like a hall or a chamber or something like that and you want to record your own impulse responses, you can then load them in here as well. Now, I actually haven't recorded any myself, but if you want that option, it's definitely there. And then if you want to open IR Utility, this is basically how you can start using your recordings and then putting them or basically converting them to impulse response files to then be read by Space Designer. So that is a real cool way of using that as well. So if you're recording in your own room and you like the sound of it and you want to use your room as a reverb preset, you can go ahead and do that. So there are plenty of other tutorials to basically teach you how to record impulse responses from a room. So definitely go and check out some videos out on the web because obviously here I'm just talking about the Logic Pro 10.4 update. So that about concludes it for this video. So we've spoken about the Chroma Verb and basically just run you through quickly the updated Space Designer plugin as well. Next up, we're going to be looking at a brand new feature called Step Effects within the 10.4 update. So I've been Rory and you've been watching Sonic Academy. Thanks everybody for watching, commenting and indeed liking. We really do appreciate all the support we get here on our Sonic Academy YouTube channel. So if you find this video super useful, please, we'd love you to hit the subscribe button. We update the uh, YouTube channel every week with new content. And if you want to watch some more relevant content, just click on the videos beside me.